Well, welcome to the third part of making the grasshopper clock. And got quite a few of the parts out here, so we're getting right along there. But today we're going to be working on the pillars. These are the uh, base pillars, and I'll cut them on the Sherline lathe. And just for the heck of it, the one up here on the top, I'm going to cut that on my old Mosley watchmaker's lathe and you know, use gravers to cut it and uh, show you that, how all that works. Well, that let's go ahead down into the cellar and uh, get started on this. Getting ready to uh, tap this uh, end piece, both ends of this piece of uh, brass to uh, 632. here on the end to fit into the plates. Putting a little relief on the end here so that when it fits on the plates it won't nice and flat. Alright, let's clean it off the end here and get a look and see what we got. Decided to do the uh, tapers on uh, the Atlas lathe using the compound. Tripod's in my way a little bit here, so uh, it's kind of jerky, uh, but the finish is good. That bit is uh, rounded on the end so that it cuts in both directions quite well. This is uh, my Mosley lathe uh, workstation. Uh, the Mosley was made in Elgin, Illinois uh, in the late 19th century uh, to around the second or third decade of the 20th century. It's a pretty old lathe. Uh, the counter shaft is also uh, Mosley uh, and uh, I'm running it on a leather belt. Uh, I keep saying I'm going to change it over to a, uh, uh, another belt but I never do. And the motor back there is just simply a, uh, a modified uh, sewing machine motor uh, that reverses. Um, I don't really need a whole lot of power with this. Uh, I got other lathes if I need power. I use this lathe mostly for uh, uh, pivot polishing and arbor work and stem work and stuff like that. And uh, that microscope you see there, that's a Carl Zeiss. Um, I don't know exactly when it was made, but. Uh, a friend of mine told me around the 1920s or something like that. And it's totally rebuilt and uh, work, perfect working order. I love it. It's just great. And I've got the twin lights there that I like a lot because uh, um, when you're doing fine work especially, you need to get rid of the shadows. And those two lights, I can get rid of the shadows quite well. And I, I just moved it out a little bit mount now so that you can see that uh, I've also stationed it right under a window so that I get lots of natural light. I really prefer the natural light when I'm doing uh, uh, close-up work. 
here's a shot at the bench. I made this bench uh, quite a while ago, and it's a, I tried to copy uh, my workbench. Uh, it's a lot uh, shorter, uh, but it's made perfect so that I can sit there and uh, do my work on the lathe. And there's my workbench there, and uh, you can see I tried to keep as close to it, as, but that workbench is a lot older. Uh, but that's my that's my workstation for the Mosley. We're not going to use the microscope, so I'm going that's going to come off, and the tailstock will go on, and uh, we'll get started. These are the two gravers I'm going to use. This one is a, uh, a, a lathe bit, a, a high-speed steel lathe bit. I made both of these. This one here is tungsten carbide round stock, and I made them according to uh, W. R. Smith's a little article on how to make gravers. Uh, these little short ones, I really like them a lot. I've uh, I've got still got some of my old ones left, but these are high speed, uh, high carbon steel gravers. Uh, but I don't use them that much anymore. I still keep them in uh, in my desk, but I'm pretty much uh, sold on the. I use the uh, super cobalt, cobalt, and high speed steel uh, lathe bits, and I like it a lot. Uh, We're going to do the radiuses first, and they're going to be a, a radius of 564. So I got to be real careful here not to uh, let the uh, the gra graver work too hard. I got to go in there light, and uh, it's a very very small delicate uh, radius. I also have the tripod leg locked in uh, right in the way too not set up for taking pictures. Yeah. Yeah, this one will be easier easier to get at. This carbide bit's a little bit smaller than what I remember. I probably should have sharpened it too. Yeah, I don't use carbide bits that much. Let me uh, let me put these V grooves in here, and then I'll take that down to the shop and put a little bit of a a better uh, angle on it and sharpen it up a little bit. a little bit better angle, but still, I gotta remember to throw that away when I'm done here. That's too small. Well, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I'm just using uh, lacquer thinners here. I, Keep a pan of lacquer thitters ready for, uh, for the dica marking and removing. This is a number four file, I believe. 
uh, and it's, I use it uh, to get rid of the really uh, the, the scratch marks that might come in. Then I go to 400, 600, 800, and 1,000. I go to 400 and then look to see if I need the file. And then I use the paper like that too occasionally. And these are the foam back uh, sandpapers. It's probably about 1,200 grit, but I, really good for finishing off when you got curves and stuff. I've already done all the major sanding, so I'm just going to do the finalized sanding here for you. Uh, no polishing will get done on these parts until the clock is completely done and working. And then, uh, then it'll be disassembled and uh, polished up and uh, put in its final condition. These are the three bits I'm going to use. The top two are high speed steel and I formed them on a grinder. And the one down below is water hardening tool steel and uh, we'll make that one next. Those lines that are laid out there on that water hardening tool steel, they're going to tell you how, to, where you, how you're going to set up your uh, uh, relief on the sides. So you want to get spot on, so I'm using this little wiggler getting on it and then we'll drill the hole. I just uh, uh, lubricated the bandsaw blade with uh, some wax, so you're seeing the, the outcome of wax here. Makes it difficult to follow the line. This is uh, where those lines that we uh, drew on the center of the hole come in handy. You set your table at a seven degree list and uh, then I grind the side angles in there and uh, those lines come in handy as a guide. Now the actual drill hole needs to uh, get a little bit of a, a, a rake to it as well. I'm using uh, uh, map gas here, getting it up to red, and then I'll quench it in the water. Final step, using the stone and getting it down flat on. Get it nice and sharp so we get a nice finish on our, uh, our radius. There's that radius cutter set up in the shoreline lane. There we go. Now this is the round cutter, <clears throat> and I didn't quite have the size that I needed, so I, it's a little bigger than what I like. But it's cutting a nice groove. But I did have to take the uh, one that I, uh, the groove that I cut on the watchmaker's lathe and uh, put it on this lathe real quickly and fi finish off that groove. This is the V groove. And just simple V grooves on either side just to match the one that we did on the watchmaker's lathe. I like the white paper in the background so I can see what I'm doing. And we're back in the lacquer thinners again. Quick sanding. Uh, 
Well, there's the three pillars. The two big ones on the left were made on the Sherline, of course, and the littler one, the top one, was made on my Mosley uh, uh, watchmaker's lathe. But I did go back over that center groove uh, on the Sherline lathe. Uh, I just uh, ended up making a... Uh, the, it didn't have a piece of high-speed steel that I thought I did. And there they are in place between the plates. Next thing I got to do is make some washers for the top here and some uh, bolts to go in there. And that'll be on the next one. And I'll probably put the feet on there as well. And then we're pretty much ready. I want to thank you all for stopping by. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you'll stop by again. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Bye now.